It's the holiday shopping season right now, and that means a lot of you will be considering a graphics card purchase. Maybe something at a discount, or maybe a simple upgrade because you want to play the latest games like Stalker 2 and your current GPU just isn't cutting it. Well, you've come to the right place because this video is all about GPU recommendations. Now for some of you, the alarm bells will be ringing. You'll be asking yourself, why are you making this video right now? New graphics cards are just months away. And that's the elephant in the room that we're about to talk about. Should you actually buy a graphics card right now? Is it a sensible choice to be tempted by the inevitable Black Friday sales? I think the answer is quite clearly no, you should not buy a graphics card right now. And I'll explain myself after this. This video is brought to you by the LG 27 GX 790A, a brand new 480Hz OLED gaming monitor that's just been announced, and you can pre-order it today. It's the world's fastest 480Hz OLED with DisplayPort 2.1, and we know what this W OLED panel is going to bring. Lightning fast 0.03 millisecond rate of response times, excellent HDR through per pixel control, and unbeatable motion clarity while gaming. Using LG's next gen OLED technology and MLA, peak brightness is set to hit 1300 nits, while blacks remain as deep and rich as ever. I'm super excited for the 480Hz LG 27GX 790A to come out, so to pre order yours today, check the link in the description below. Just to be very clear, we strongly believe you should not buy a graphics card right now. This is because we're expecting the announcement of next-gen GPUs in the first week of January 2025. This is when the Consumer Electronics Show takes place in Las Vegas, and during the show we expect NVIDIA to announce the GeForce RTX 50 series and AMD to announce RDNA 4 based GPUs. It's rare to have both announcements occurring at practically the same time, but the two largest GPU designers should have new products to show off just a month and a half from now. New graphics cards means the potential for new levels of performance at existing price points. Now, yeah, we all know the graphics card market is pretty crappy these days, especially for mid-range and entry-level buyers, but new GPU launches means the potential for improvements in price to performance at the very least, and that could be anything from a minor gain to a modest gain based on the last couple of generations. I'm not going to sit here and say the RTX 50 series is going to bring huge gains in value, we're talking about Nvidia here, but there's a chance of an improvement. There's a couple of things in particular to look out for. AMD's next generation Radeon RX 8000 series based on the RDNA 4 architecture has been confirmed to target mid-range and mainstream customers with no high-end models in production. The only way a new mid-range series would work is if it offers better value, better priced performance than existing RDNA 3 models. Of course, AMD could stuff up this launch, the Radeon team has been known to do so lately, but all the talk out of the company is a strategy shift to prioritize the most popular graphics card price segments. Hopefully this means better products at better prices. With AMD targeting the mid-range, rumors are suggesting that Nvidia are bringing up the launch of mid-range GeForce 50 series models like the RTX 5070, shortening the usual release cadence between the highest end cards and the mid-range stuff most people are interested in. This is just an unconfirmed rumor that should be taken with a grain of salt, but it could mean we don't have to wait long before Nvidia shows off their new mid-range offerings. All of this is to say that within the next few months, we should have new mid-range graphics cards announced at the very least. AMD RDNA 4, possibly Nvidia RTX 50 models, and there's even Intel in the mix here with new Arc Battle Mage GPUs that we're expecting to learn more about soon. The most sensible decision to make as a prospective GPU buyer is to wait for these announcements, assess what the products have to offer, and make a decision with all the information at hand. You should want to know how the new models perform and their prices, how existing models perform and where they are priced in the current market before pulling the trigger on a new GPU. The last thing you want to do is buy a current gen model right now at the end of the product cycle, only for it to be superseded within months, leaving you disappointed. This is why we don't recommend buying a graphics card right now. Wait until you have all the information. So you shouldn't buy a graphics card right now. That's our general advice. But there is going to be a level of discount on existing models where it will make sense to jump the gun early and you're likely to get a good deal even considering next-gen models. So what does that sort of discount look like? The absolute minimum we think is worth considering is a discount of 25%. This allows you to account for the potential of a tier shift in performance from a new generation. Here's an example. 
Let's say a next generation RTX 5070 offers the performance of the RTX 4070 Ti for the same $600 US asking price as the RTX 4070 was at launch. This would be the new generation providing a tier shift. To account for this today, you'd want to get the performance of the 4070 Ti or even the 4070 Ti Super for no more than $600. The 4070 Ti Super has an $800 MSRP, so you'd be wanting a 25% discount to bring that down to $600. And this is based on some of the better improvements we saw throughout the RTX 30 to RTX 40 series transition. The RTX 4070 offered an 18% reduction in cost per frame relative to the RTX 3080 10GB. The RTX 4070 Super offered a 21% reduction in cost per frame relative to the RTX 3070. The RTX 4060 offered a 16% reduction in cost per frame relative to the RTX 3060, though it also included less VRAM. Don't forget the RTX 40 series was a relatively mediocre generation. In some prior generations, we've seen a cost per frame evolution in the 30 to 40% range, which could affect the level of discount you think would be acceptable. If you're more optimistic about the upcoming generation, you should be on the lookout for a larger discount, at least 30%. If you're less optimistic about what the future holds, then 25% or even 20% would be appropriate. For Nvidia GPUs, this leads to the following. I think most of these discounts are extremely unrealistic, and most sales you will see will be much more pathetic 5 or 10% reductions, which is hardly what we would call a Black Friday level discount, at least by the old standards of Black Friday. Getting $50 or $100 off a GPU, especially in the mid-range, is nowhere near enough to consider buying now instead of waiting for new GPUs in early 2025. As someone that likes to have all the information at hand before buying, even a 25% discount wouldn't necessarily get me to pull the trigger. For AMD GPUs, we're recommending the same 25% discount as a minimum acceptable level. In fact, we'd possibly even recommend closer to a 30% discount in many situations. These discounts should be relative to the typical price AMD has been selling these models for the past year, not the inflated MSRP that was often quickly discounted just months after launch. For example, the RX 7900 XT had a ridiculous $900 MSRP, but since the middle of 2023, you've been able to buy one for $750 or less, so nearly 18 months of that price. Therefore, we believe you should be looking for at least a 25% discount relative to its $750 typical price, so that would be no more than $560 US. Again, if you're more optimistic about the future generation, and in particular believe RDNA 4 will be a boon for GPU value, then you should ask for a greater discount. Do you think the RX 8000 series will offer RX 7900 XT levels of performance for $500? If so, there is absolutely no way that you should be paying more than $500 for a 7900 XT today. We have started to see some price movement for AMD GPUs, with the RX 7900 XT hitting $620 US and the RX 7700 XT hitting $360 US, but in both cases, these prices are short of what we'd consider a suitable discount to buy a graphics card now versus waiting. The 7700 XT for $360 as an example, you could have got that level of performance for just $20 more back in May of this year. Hardly a discount worth getting excited about and certainly not good enough in the face of new products in January. So again, we strongly recommend against buying a graphics card right now, and realistically, we're probably not going to see discounts that would be appropriate with a new GPU launch just months away. Retailers and GPU manufacturers want you to think these supposed deals are great and present a large discount, but please do your research to figure out whether they're actually genuine deals or not. Despite all of this, you might be in a position where, for whatever reason, you just don't want to wait for new graphics cards in January, and you want to buy right now even though current discounts are not amazing. What should you do in this situation? Is it possible to make the most of a bad situation? Well, if you want a high-end graphics card, the GeForce RTX 4090 is still the fastest model, but it's exceptionally bad value, having risen in price to around $2,300 US these days, well above its $1,600 US MSRP. It's just not worth purchasing at that price when the RTX 4080 Super is down around $950 to $1,000 US. For high-resolution 4K gaming, the 4080 Super is about 25% slower than the RTX 4090, but at well under half the price. The 4080 Super is especially good for ray tracing, where it makes much more sense to buy than the Radeon RX 7900 XTX, as it's upwards of 30% faster on average, and generally it's only 15% more expensive and also gives you access to DLSS.
If you don't care too much about ray tracing or DLSS and want tons of rasterization performance, that's where the 7900 XTX would come back into consideration, especially if it's significantly cheaper than the 4080 Super in your region. For upper mid-range, lower high tier gaming, this is where we see the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super, typically battling the Radeon RX 7900 XT. In rasterization, the 7900 XT is generally slightly faster, but for ray tracing, the 4070 Ti Super is a tier above in performance. So again, it depends how you value ray tracing and DLSS. At a 20% discount, and we're approaching that level as of recording this video, the 7900 XT gets harder to look past, especially because near $600, the 7900 XT competes more with the 4070 Super. Now the 4070 Super is still the faster card for ray tracing relative to the 7900 XT, and it comes with DLSS support, but the rasterization performance of the Radeon model is nearly 20% ahead. Again, it's pretty clear which way you'd go here. If you value ray tracing, get the GeForce model. If you don't think you'd use ray tracing, the Radeon card is looking good, especially as its raw performance would allow you to run games with less upscaling. At around $500, this is where we usually see the RTX 4070 go head to head with the RX 7800 XT. Over the last few months, the Radeon card is usually $20 to $40 cheaper, for best case, about 10% more rasterization performance than the 4070. As usual, the NVIDIA GPU is much better for ray tracing and supports DLSS. Now, the Radeon card, in my opinion, looks great for games without ray tracing support, but overall, I'd want it to be, say, 15% cheaper than the 4070 to make it clearly the best option in this tier. In the lower parts of the mid-range, I would definitely avoid the RTX 4060 Ti 8 GB, as we're seeing many examples these days where 8 GB of VRAM is not enough for a GPU of this level of performance. The 16 GB model is pulling well ahead in more modern games, and is usually available at a $50 to $60 premium. Also in this range is the cheaper Radeon RX 7700 XT 12GB, which we have seen cost about 20% less than the 4060 Ti 16GB on a good day. That's a great deal compared to the 4060 Ti if you don't care about ray tracing, because not only is the 7700 XT much cheaper, it's also around 15% faster for rasterization, giving it a huge cost per frame advantage. But the 4060 Ti 16GB is better than a 7800 XT at ray tracing, if that's something that you care about. For mainstream gamers, this is where we'd strongly preference rasterization performance over ray tracing, because mainstream GPUs generally aren't fast enough for a good ray tracing experience. The main contenders these days are the RX 7600 XT and RX 7600 from AMD, alongside the RTX 4060 from NVIDIA. The 7600 XT is the fastest card and has the most VRAM, offering double the other card's capacity at 16GB, which puts it in a really good position, especially as the premium to get the XT model over the non-XT has reduced down to $30 at the moment. If the RX 7600 XT and RTX 4060 are about the same price in your region as they are at the time of filming, the 7600 XT looks to be the better deal. 5-10% to more rasterization performance from the AMD model and double the VRAM. The only reason you'd get the 4060 is if you want DLSS instead of FSR or XCSS upscaling, and I'm not sure that is worth it to cut the amount of VRAM in half. If you're considering anything cheaper than an RTX 4060 or RX 7600 XT, just get the Radeon RX 6600. It's still around, it's much faster than anything Nvidia has to offer around $200 US. Seriously, don't buy the RTX 3050, it's such a terrible deal, just get a 6600. These examples are just how we see things at the moment if you absolutely have to purchase a GPU right now. Generally throughout this generation, NVIDIA GPUs have offered stronger ray tracing performance and additional features like DLSS at a given price. AMD GPUs have come in a little cheaper than their GeForce counterparts while offering better rasterization performance. It's hard to make definitive recommendations here as some gamers have strong preferences for certain features or rendering technologies and how you personally see those features will dictate which brand offers more value. That's outside the low end though where Radeon is far ahead of GeForce. In general though, just wait and see what new GPUs have in store for you in January. It's not a long wait, and I think you'll be much better off. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you appreciate the testing, the analysis that we do here at Hardware Unboxed, please do consider subscribing to the channel and also supporting us directly via our Patreon account. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to some pretty cool perks and benefits like our Discord community, monthly live streams, BTS content, and plenty more. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.